Ryan. What's going on, folks? This is Jacob filling in for Tom O'Brien today. Uh, you can give us a call. You can send me an email as well. I like that, too. Jacob at TFNN.com. Let's hop in and see what we got going on. It's been a little bit since I've been with you all. We have the ES Mini trading off about 0.24%, 5,078. We have the Russell off about 0.55%. Of course, we're trading up 2,048 in the Russell. Some nice movement in the stock uh, over the past few days, at least. NQ off about 0.62%, trading 17,909, oscillating 910. Uh, the Dow futures, 38,929, off about 0.22%. Right now, you know, kind of just a sideways to lower day. Gold contract uh, actually doing okay. Looks like we're having a little consolidation period in it, uh, at least uh, for the past week or so. Obviously, we had a big blowout uh, in the gold contract in general. Um, we saw some massive movements down in companies like Wheat and Precious Metal. Uh, obviously, Newmont got hit pretty hard as well. I believe we were talking about that um, maybe a few weeks ago. I think someone had called, and this isn't like a, I'm not saying this to like be like, oh yeah, look, I called it right. But what I'm trying to say is like, you had this just non-stellar movement in Newmont, right, on low volume, and it kept wanting to test these, these lower bounds, right? And that can set up for a lower profile. Uh, and whatever that was in the day that sent gold prices down, well, it really uh, shocked a few of these companies. Obviously, you can see the downward trend here. And uh, it seems like we're continuing a little bit of a recovery, not in Newmont. I mean, these are these are low lows. I'm trying to get 29.86 currently. Uh, this is on the six month. Let me see. I mean, this is low on five year. Okay. Even lower than roughly middle of March of 2020. So at least the gold contract, we've seen like a minor bounce back in it, not minor, I mean, this is pretty decent, right? We had this low around, I mean, it cracked that psychological level of 2000, um, not on significant volume or anything, but you know, we were down here for a little while, trading about 1824, we came back up. Um, this of course was in October of last year. Then we had that down break, excuse me, this is the one I wanted to look at in 1997 and 40 cents, and we're trading back up to 2042. We'll see if we can maintain some stability there. That was actually, I think, somewhat like encouraging in some capacity. Uh, I'm just, I, I want to see where the large, large appeal in, in gold is going to be and what's going to send this up, right? It's seeing like, you know, these kind of peripheral, I suppose, assets or commodities. I mean, I see like crypto really taking a lot of this. And I think people do invest in crypto for the same reason they invest in gold. Again, I've spoken about that a lot, how I don't know if that's you know, logically the best thing. Um, but regardless, I mean, we're seeing a massive you know, capital dump into crypto recently. We're seeing nothing in gold. Um, of course, these are two different vehicles entirely, but I still think you have a uh, conversation societally uh, that these seek to do the same thing, which is kind of a hedge against inflation. And I, I honestly, I see this kind of being like a paradigm shift, maybe. And again, I'm young. This is really like the first time I've seen anything other than to the moon bull market, right? So this is kind of just my perspective as, you know, a 27-year-old uh, who's only been investing for maybe about five years or something like that. Silver at 2264. Uh, copper, you know, pretty stable still at 383. Uh, off about 0.34% today. Of course, the big talk, you know, is going on with crude and uh, really natural gas as well. Um, I had, I'll be honest, like I had no hope that natural gas was going to do anything. Um, again, like you, when I traveled to Denver, okay, they, they, you know, mine a lot out there and, and one of the byproducts of oil is going to be natural gas. And also you just have fracking in general. Uh, and they literally just burn it off. You know, there's just so much of it. And I, I think, you know, there's a lot of different things at play here. Uh, you know, I think in the Permian Basin, you're going to have natural gas being kind of like an auxiliary uh, in case there's something wrong with oil prices so to kind of balance out energy. Uh, but, I, you know, I think they're not cutting back supply. And I, I we, there is some conversation now that there is going to be some cutback in natural gas supply, which I believe is kind of what's contributing to this momentary rally in uh 
in the natural gas contract and obviously moves and like boil and everything. Um, but I think they were holding out kind of cutting production in the hopes that liquefying natural gas becomes a little bit more efficient, right, and cost effective. And it stands to be seen if that's going to be the case. And if that gets pushed out a long time, I think, you know, I guess you might end up seeing more companies just kind of opt to just decrease production of purely that kind of stuff. And maybe that will increase the price of it. I don't know. It's definitely unique. And I mean, we had a, you were email me, uh, and he emails me a lot, and I, I love hearing from him. Um, but he was talking about natural gas, and I was just like, listen, like, I, there's just so much of it, and people are burning it off. And I don't see why that would be a, you know, a good investment opportunity, but it was, you know, and these are like interests, like the interesting journey of trading, right? And thinking you have this kind of like thesis and you run it and then, and then reality just kind of hits you in the foot, right? But of course, that's why we have the traders here and all the newsletters kind of teach you. And I learn every day uh, from this kind of stuff. And it really is fascinating. Uh, let's take a look at Tesla uh, trading up 201.51. Of course, the Roadster is coming out, and this is some kind of uh, crossover production with SpaceX, which is a cool little marketing uh, campaign for them. Uh, Tesla still at 201.52. Again, demand for EV is going down. We are seeing consumers in general kind of push back against uh, increases in prices of everything, right? I mean, from vehicles, you see a, you know, greater uh, consumption of used vehicles. OK, and uh, you're, you're even seeing it in stuff like at the grocery store where generic uh, goods are being purchased at a higher rate now, you know. And so I don't know what the price point. I'll have to look this up because I, I think it has been mentioned. But the price point of the Roadster and these, you know, new, quote unquote, top of the line EVs. And, I, you know, I think on, you know, a few years at least going out, you're going to see kind of a suppressed demand in it. Let's take a look at Steel Dynamics, man. It's just the uh, little engine that won't quit. We are at 132.55 now. Again, it's nerve-wracking for me a little bit. Of course, you had a lot of volume coming up, okay, kind of past this 120 area, and we had been seeing kind of a trade-in from November up until about December 14th in that 110 to 120. Shot up on some interesting volume, right? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of conflict here. A traversal back down to 110, and then we're up at 130. Now, this is all on light volume. Okay, and that, again, would tell me that maybe this isn't phenomenal, but you keep seeing it defy this kind of analysis. It's very interesting. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.